comes. Hi, and how are you doing to all you super amazing, super intelligent, and super everything nice people out there? Welcome to the home of Ultimate Entertainment. Now, this right here is that amazing show, Ebizonga TOMZ, right here on Mzanti's number one channel, SABC1 Mzanti for sure. Now, when you have Musa, but I bring together you and get into about Kurunku and Kuwagaloki, SABC Education, the Amani Department of Science and Technology, just to talk to you. On your screens right now, well, I'm going to go and get some Musa, and the lady right next to me is Ubongi Sipo. E-Toms is always about the freshest tech them that they have to offer. But what we do have to tell you though is that Namitlanje, we are seeing how the freshest tech and most innovative minds have allowed us to go back in time. Before I give it to Nani, my Nani, my boy, my boy, my boy, my boy, my boy, my boy, my time travel, it's in there. But rather, the paleo sciences. Before I give it to Nani, my boy, my boy, Nani, don't you paleo sciences, my boy, you see, yeah? I was going to say, my boy, my boy, my boy, my boy, my boy, my boy, my we find out how exactly we're able to know Inkugata as Tev Veche from just bombs. Join us as we learn about one of Mzanti's latest discovery. We see some other cool things that have been getting up to in the world of paleo sciences. Check out some awesome apps for your mobile device. Why are you going to talk to me about this video? From Indian, we're going to talk to you about this video. Yes, that might raise more questions than answers. But as my high school maths teacher always said, I am not taking any questions right now. And that is because we're going to talk to you about this video. The script and asking you guys at home the questions. So, be nani kala galogu ni be ready. Man, it yes, it in answer. New season, tapu koi. I'm the Bukhang Mutloki. I come from uh, Saint Martin de Porres High School. My name is Tidiso. In Kamalamu, Kamu Hello. Reality, this is Orlando West, Saint Martin. Paleontology. I've never heard of it. I think it's the study of fossils. The study of fossils. Sometimes they look at like the layer in which they found the layer of rock in which they found the fossil. They use chemicals. Naledi something. Homo naledi. Homo naledi. Because let's be honest, Lena Gay TOMZ, we always have the answers way before you even ask this. You are about to ask how exactly do people know all of these amazing things about life way back then? Well, guess the teacher about thousands or even million years ago. Mm -hmm. When I flap it, I finally land. I mean, hope that a group of people traveled back in time. Well, unfortunately, that is not the case. Yes, Galoxia, because as in Donnie, the inventor is still busy watching the TOMZ. Mm -hmm. Here's how they did it, though. Check it out. Like any other species of animals and plants have evolved over the centuries to adapt to the changing conditions of their habitats. So one of the most accurate ways to date a fossil is carbon dating. Well, the proteins, carbohydrates and fats that make up much of our tissues are all based on carbon. Now one trillionth of this carbon is the radioactive version of carbon being a carbon for from Kibbe to the moment is swell like the proportion of carbon-14 starts to drop as it gradually turns to nitrogen. Now, the FNAS is going that the rate of decay is negative 0.693. One is able to determine how long ago an organism died by determining its carbon-14 levels. Now, paleontology and the science of looking into the ancient past looks very, very interesting. Now, imagine all the things that we've been able to understand about to ourselves and Elisa's Pulakwe by looking back thousands, if not millions, of years into the past. But, Bongi, why imagine when there are geniuses out there that allowed us to see this ourselves? Yazo Tid, Begala. Paleo science is what we're talking about, and I'm trying to prepare to touch down in Pretoria. So if I can share my paleontologist with Kazela Gabans about fossils, who took a look at my tumble hour, I data how many years back, and about Ganja and all of these things. It's you and me in this mission, your fresh boy. Let's get it. Okay, so Stephanie, to our viewers at home, can you please tell us what is your profession and where are we? So I'm a collections manager here at the Ditsong National Museum of Natural History in Pretoria. Mm -hmm. And the collection I look after specifically is that of Pleistocene paleontology. Okay, what exactly is paleontology? <laughs> paleontology is the study of fossils. Okay. And Pleistocene is a geological age period in which the fossils fall, that fall under my care. Mm. And that is between five to one million years in age. Okay. This is a fossil of dist our distant ancestor. Mm -hmm. 
It is a species known as Australopithecus africanus mm -hmm. and was found at the Sturkfontein Caves in the Cradle of Humankind. Mm -hmm. How old is this fossil? This fossil is over two million years in age. The exact age of the fossil is mm -hmm. determined by special scientists called geochemists. So I want to know, how do you know that this is a human and this is an animal and this is a female and this is a male? So Caddy, if we look over here, mm -hmm. you can see that this lower jaw is clearly that of something that had required sharp teeth. Mm. So this is possibly a carnivore or a meat eater. Mm -hmm. So teeth are also an indication to us of what an animal's diet was. Mm -hmm. So if we know what the animal's diet was, it's easier for us to determine who the animal is. Mm -hmm. And in this case, this is the lower jaw of a leopard. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Interestingly enough, this specific specimen was found in close proximity to this skull we have over here. Now this skull that we have over here is the skull of a young distant ancestor. Mm. What is abnormal are these marks that you see here yes. at the top of the skull. Mm -hmm. And if you look closely, you'll see they go through to the other side. Mm. Oh no. Yeah, perfect mm. fit. Mmm. So basically this was like an attack. Exactly. You see it is a little bit like detective work in the past where we find these kinds of evidence mm. and if we put it all together it starts building an image of what happened in the past. Okay. Is that a fossil? No. What we have over here is a block of rock that mm -hmm. is referred to as cave breccia. Mm -hmm. Cave breccia is is all the loose sand, bones, rocks and debris that was washed in through the cave entrance and collected at the bottom of the cave floor. If you look closely, what I'm going to show you here is a fossil specimen mm. inside this cave breccia. So what has happened is the limestone has cemented all of that loose debris mm. that has come in through the cave entrance mm. and it has formed this rock that we know as Cave Breccia. So, no, good job. So, good job. Yeah, Welcome to TOMZ. Yeah, okay, so, what's your like, profession? You're going to get this goopy and we're now we're in the end. Last thing that is, we break down the breccia. Okay. We're going to explore the time. So, we're going to explore the time. So, we're going to explore the time. Okay. And we'll go through the breccia blocks. Mm. And as you can see, in the time, mm. we'll bring it to the museum. Mm. And Masfi Museum says that the color okay. of it, so the color, mm. the weight, a mm. lot of pictures. And say that the specimen is a little bit of a parallel blue. Why is it a parallel blue? Mm. Because of the time we have a custom fast fit. Mm. So you need to protect the time. So you need to change it? Yes. Okay. As it's going to be exposed. As it's exposed, so far as it's blue. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then say tata, so far as part of the acid, mm. acetic acid. Okay. As we want to block the in a part of the city, so far as acid is, it's going for six hours. Okay. And then acid is is some some Okay. Acid is that it breaks down the calcium. Okay. So what is that? It reverses how the lichen is forming the cord. As the lichen, they hold it together, the calcium. Mm. So it reverses the, the, the process. So, as if I go to the keeper, so if I go running water to neutralize the acid, twice the amount like at the part of the month. Okay. And then go running water. Mm. And that cycle is a continuum mm. until the whole thing for me, okay. it's time. Yo, are you pee like that? must have been really interesting. It's not that I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm doing. Anyways, guys, let's take a quick commercial break and let's meet up right after this. Meet up with the guys at the cradle of humankind and learn all about the newly discovered Homo naledi. Check out this new species of dinosaur discovered right here in Mzansi. Yes, 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 don't move. Yes, yes, don't you guys are all this and more after the break. Charms. you as Umzansi because that's what we do best. Who's the one you want to go to Grand Gota? It's your boy Sia and your girl Bongi Sipo. On the Fresh Yourself Fresh Sci-Tech Show in the land of Umzansi. It's in the end of the mission. You can't get in a bit. 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 You can't get in a bit
Mzansi for sure. Mm, I get this one right here has been specially brought to you by Mzansi's Department of Science and Technology. If you want to get to know what to do, then let me just jog their memories down memory lane. Mm -hmm. Today, TRMZ has been all about the paleo sciences looking back at the life from many centuries ago. Since I've been to know about how the world was many years ago, we even saw how people are able to date fossils and find out how old they are using SIM. But believe it or not, nah, that is just the tip of the iceberg. Up next, we have Mzanti's brand new star that hailed back from deep down in the earth in a place known as the Chamber of Stars. Guys, does a homona lady mean anything to you? <laughs> Come join up. Your fresh boys still on a mission, but first, it's a quick topic here, and I'm Kanji Paleo Sciences. Well, touch down in Maruping, so for now, I'm going to be a lady. We don't know what it is. Well, I don't know what it is. You want to know what it is? You and me, let's get it. Come on. My name is Lindsay Smith. Mm -hmm. I am from the Cradle of Humankind World Heritage Site Management Authority. Yes. And the reason we're here today is because of the wonderful Naledi exhibition. Yes. So tell us about what is exactly Homo Naledi. Okay. Homo Naledi is the latest discovery of a fossil that has been found here in the Cradle of Humankind. Okay. And I shouldn't say a fossil because we actually have found over 1,550 fossils. Oh, okay. Of wow. the, uh, what is called a hominid. Okay. So what in science we would refer to as a relative or an ancestor of us, Homo sapiens. Mm -hmm. The reason Homo naledi is so significant is because that number, 1,550, Mm. so far signifies the highest number of hominid fossils ever found in Africa. Oh wow. Okay, so why Naledi? The name Naledi does not refer to a single individual uh, fossil um, like we have seen with Littlefoot or Karabo. It's mm. the actual species name oh, okay. of this new species, okay. Homo Naledi. Okay, so let's say, tell me, what is so significant about these fossils? Okay, quite a lot actually, mm -hmm. it's not just one single thing. Firstly, as I mentioned, in terms of the number of fossils that were recovered, mm -hmm. that in itself is historical. Okay. It simply does not happen that you find so many hominid fossils uh, of one species mm. at one single place. Secondly, um, the significance of Homo naledi is that it is part of, it's been scientifically determined to be part of the genus of which humans come from. We are Homo sapiens, mm -hmm. they are Homo naledi, naledi, which means that they are according to the current science being done, one of our ancestors. Okay. So they're also significant in terms of the nature in which the bodies were found. These fossils were not found in what we would consider to be a typical fossil accumulation. Okay. They were, when we usually excavate a site, we find lots of other, what we call faunal remains. So we find other fossils from different kinds of animals, uh, pigs, for example, bovids, uh, birds, lots of rodents and the, and the like that are often mixed and associated with those other fossils. In this particular case, in the Rising Star Chamber, there was nothing else. Mm. The only fossils they were finding were from this new species, Homo naledi. So the hypothesis that is that they were being actively disposed of. They were disposing of their dead. Okay. And that in itself is incredibly significant because it is not an activity we associate with any other animal apart from humans. It shows an indication, possibly, that there is an awareness and a consciousness around their mortality that we don't see apart from humans. So where do you get these fossils? Okay, the Homo lady fossils were found in a cave um, called the Rising Star Cave okay. in the Cradle of Humankind mm -hmm. uh, in an incredibly difficult uh, chamber that was excavated by a very, very specialized team mm -hmm. back in 2013. Okay. My name is Pedro Bosov. Yes. I'm a uh, geologist by trade and training, but I'm also a uh, speleologist, which is also, uh, well, crawling around in cavers. Okay, so tell us about the, the cave experience, finding the home in lady. How, how did that work about? As a geologist, I've been caving in the cradle of humankind or in this area now for what, close on to 35 years. Ooh. I've always been sure there's more out there than we know of. Uh, the whole cave comprised of a network of tight, tight joints, tight passages, most of it is really where you really have to work your way through these very, very small passages. And right at the back, we found the slot we went down the slot, 17 centimeter, into this chamber, and at once we saw bones lying around. Mm. We saw 
a piece of jaw with what seems to be human-like teeth. Okay. So I immediately realized this is hominid because mm. I could see the jaw, the configuration of the jaw, and then from there on organized expedition resulting in in uh, the uh, Naledi find. Mm. Zanzi is truly a land filled with pleasant surprises. Benyaz Gininapwekai that we recently did a whole new species of dinosaur, Dimananike Nepulanosaura eocolum, which basically means the rain lizard. Le dinosaur Lelagebe Tsunani, which happened to have lived between 200 and 180 million years ago, was about 8 meters tall and is said to have weighed a massive 5 tons. The dinosaur Lenake had a one-up on the dinosaurs it shared its habitat with. It had a really flexible neck. The discovery of these fossils not only open our eyes up to animal species that lived million years ago, but also allow us to know more about what different habitats were like back then. Amazing, but I had no idea that we were that amazing. Yeah, I mean, two brand new species were found right here on the tip of Africa. I wonder okay, what other mysteries does this land of ours hold? What other discoveries do you guys at home think we are yet to uncover? Hit us up on either Facebook, Twitter, or even Instagram and let us know. Oh, you could just tell us how amazing the show is. For now, though, we're not going to be able to do it. We're fresh. We're not going to Mess with your dialogue, we go back in time, it's for Negabanta, about the evolution of humans, get some useful paleontology apps, and we'll tell you some cool advice from our Pepe Betman and Shanj. Stay tuned, we are coming back right after this. Charms. Charms. I know my first is we are see fresh is Jimmy Lai Boleo. Welcome back to the home of science and tech entertainment in Mzansi. The one and only Cho MZ on SABC One Mzansi for sure, proudly brought to you by Mzansi's Department of Science and Technology as well as the SABC Education. Where does the human race come from? And how exactly did we end up on top of the food chain? I think there's only way to find the answers to such questions. The human lineage or family tree begins when we split from our common ape ancestor somewhere between 7 and 13 million years ago. Now our oldest ancestor is said to be the Australopithecus afarensis, named the Lucy species, lived between 3.85 and 2.95 million years ago. Now the question of when we first harnessed the power of fire is still open for debate, but it's said to have happened somewhere between 1.8 million to around 800,000 years ago. Now the energy gained from cooked meat is said to have fueled the dramatic evolution of the human brain. Armed with the knowledge of fire and very skillful hands, the Homo lineage advanced to be able to develop advanced language, agriculture, and many other things that set us apart from the animal world. On the subject, you could have it all at your fingertips. But what if I told you that it's all possible because after all, you're dancing to your MZ and we always have you covered, I know. So get your shoes ready and join us for this guided tour through the cyber streets, proudly brought to you by the freshest boy in the land, M. Ketar Obangawul. Once you share your newly found love for paleontology, to understand exactly what a paleontologist does, then why don't you get yourself the Paleontologist app as a to understand the job of a paleontologist in a fun and interactive manner. Why not get yourself clued up on the newly discovered home and our lady by checking out this cool website that has all the info you need to know, presented to you in a way that you and I can understand. Then for all you geniuses who want to know the finer details, all of that is found on the eLife for free. Get it now. I'm going to talk about Ufuna Manyanyanyan by a paleontologist, right? When the more discoveries on the lives of SCP Lila many years ago. But the Umbuza Ultimate Nani, how exactly do you get into this career? As a teen, my first Ufuta is Buzo Utlape Kai, which is a map of a subject in Melly Winter in high school. And what do I need to study in varsity? Well, we've got all of that nicely packaged just for you. Come check out you. An ecologist studies the interaction between Indus Pilayo and their environment. So as an ecologist, you would be required to undertake environmental studies and do laboratory tests of animals and plants. As an ecologist, you would need to study Bachelor of Sciences, which is a BSc degree which requires you to study biology, physical science, as well as mathematics and have a minimum average of 65%. I got my first on Copa Chosebe Kulmile, so take the advice, go out there and achieve your dreams, just like today's guests have done. So from them, just to give you even more inspiration to go out there and do what you need to do. Do like I do. Uh, the paleo sciences as a career, it's very important that you study in particular subjects such as science, biology, and mathematics. 
South Africa has some of the most incredible paleontological resources in the world, ranging all the way from pre-dinosaurs to the dinosaurs, all the way up to what we've seen here in the cradle of humankind, our more modern hominid ancestors that we see here. And also we have some spectacular archaeology in South Africa. And then Helia Kuskodong, Lefesa Bichigaluna, Lea Kodi University, Lichu the Gamarapu. Marapu was the only lichology thing, and then Utenelli paleontology. Paleontology, so the Ruyako University, Okasi Krefela, Kodi University Technic Tenning. Okako University Sonibo Vet, Boy UCT, Boy UP, and then why studies are paleontology. Okai studies are done, we are through archaeology. And then we are going to study the camera and we see more camera. And I'm trying to get up on Facebook here too. And again, at a gigantic shout out to you guys. You guys are awesome. Hola. Where's me? Where's me? Where's me? Where's me? Where's me? Where's me? Thank you, Tom's, for allowing me to send a shout out to my school friends, as well as to my school, Uongi and Utina. I love them the way I love the science. That's the only school, Tina Ongi. Ongi School, everybody. But Nani, we love you so much. We thank you so much for the love. Continue watching along with Tom's. I'm a full fan of the message. And on Facebook, we are simply T O M Z. On Twitter, at Tom's underscore S A B C underscore one. And even on Instagram, we are so like at Tom's CV underscore S A B C one. Come on, to see Valagan Jalo Sita. Ibo, Ibo, Ibo. Keep tweeting. Exciting news, Tom's fans. This season, Tom is launched with the Tom's t shirt design competition. Competition? Mm -hmm. Did you see I just say competition? Now, what you must do is you must design a super cool image. And get an image must have something to do with the science and technology. Science, technology, Tom's. Yeah. Yeah. Then, what you do is you upload it, or rather, you share it on our Facebook page. Yeah, but it's my favorite. Now, the picture that gets most likes on our Facebook page here, too, so it's printed on the Tom's t shirt. Not only on Facebook, yeah, but on Twitter as well. Where now you can comment, then, <laughs> who knows? We might be delivering a t-shirt, yeah. Just like that, we have reached the end of today's dosage of ultimate entertainment. Yeah, tell me, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to as much as we did, I'm going to tell you, 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 Facebook and on Twitter, and even on Instagram, I'm going to tell you, 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 i am going to tell you 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 i am going to tell